My heavenly Father, our heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you so much for the wonderful day, the day that you've made, and we are the people that we've made at times like this, oh God. Behold, as we are going again, Lord, to listen to the message of coming from your throne, the message of hope, the message of deliverance, the message of love, oh God, sharing to us, oh Father. I pray that, Lord, I decrease that you increase, oh Father. I pray that, Lord, I'll be just a mere vessel and let your divine word, God, flow through me just as a vessel. Minister to each and every one of us, oh Father. Your people have come through different places, oh God, coming, being rained down, oh Father, but they've come across just to listen to your word. Father, you said, blessed are those who hunger, for you shall feed them, oh Father. This morning, feed us, oh God, through your word. This morning, God, meet with our need of Father. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit and works of darkness in this place. Let them be defeated in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you speak to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let us uh, open from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. If somebody can read for us. Projector people from the book of John. I'll read. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go to, through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sicha near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the, into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. That is, and it's verse 17. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You're right when you say you have no husband. Okay, can you also read verse 25 and 6? So we finish reading. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Verse 28 up to 30. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. And lastly, verse 39. Verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. 
Thank you so much, Abraham. Oh, good reading. Okay, our, the title of our message this morning is Jesus Cares. Jesus Cares. Amen. You know, we are living in this world. We are human beings and uh, we come across so many challenges in our lives, physical as well as, as spiritual. Now, here it is a story of Samaritan woman. From this story, there are so many lessons we can learn from here. But this morning, we want to see this lesson, or oh, this is the word of encouraging you and me that Jesus cares. Can you say Jesus cares? Amen. Now we see this is a story of Samaritan woman. Samaritans people were not even being, they had no dealings with the Jews. Jesus was, was the Jew. Now Jesus was traveling. He was coming from the northern part of Israel and he was crossing to go into Judea. And according to the, uh, to the culture over there, uh, Samaritans were not mis mixing with the Jews because the his historically there, there was war and the, there was war and the king of Assyria um, I mean, defeated the, the Jews and chased some of them and they imported some of the people from far away, including Samaritans, and they put them in the, in the middle of the king of the kingdom of, uh, of uh, Israel, in the northern part of Israel and the southern part of the Israel. So these people, they were not uh, historically mixing. They had no dealings. Amen. Yeah, so the Samaritans, they were, their regions was located between the northern part of Israel and the southern part of, of, of Israel. So the, the Jews used it, when they used it to go to the southern part of Israel, which, which was the kingdom of Judea, they used it to travel around it to evade the, that part of Samaria and to go into the southern part of Israel. But behold, Lord Jesus decided to go and cross through Samaritans. So this woman was really shocked to see the Jew over there at the well, and now he's talking to her. So Jesus confronted that woman and asked her, can you give me a drink? It was not that Jesus did not know anything, but he wanted to engage in conversation with this woman so that he can reach to the really needy that woman had. Praise the Lord. This woman was very shocked because you see this woman first, she was very, she seems to be very poor because she had encountered like five failed relationships. She was engaging to, she was staying with this man, the, the, relationship, the relationship will fail. Another relationship of five relationships and now this sixty man was not even her husband. You can imagine such a kind of a lady. Society did not regard him. She seemed to be no having value. She seems to be kind of outcast. And I think she was poor. That's why she was busy jumping from one relationship to another one to another one. So you can imagine if somebody from the authority, maybe from high authority is coming to the town. He will come and meet some, you know, high level people. But Jesus, out of his plan in heaven, eh? I believe Jesus came, but he had a plan in heaven. That one of the person that I'm going to meet is this Samaritan woman. Praise the Lord. The, this is one of the stories which touches me so much when I was reading the book of, of John. And I found myself jumping that day. I said, Lord, if you give me someday to preach anyway, I must preach about this. Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus cares for us. It doesn't matter what state you are. And maybe myself, I've forgotten to greet you. Or maybe the pastor has forgotten to greet you. But you know that Jesus cares. We are human beings. We have got so many things around us, so many activities. But look here, Jesus, out of heaven, in his divine plan, this Samaritan woman was in his plan. Amen. This morning, don't look at your state and don't think the circumstances that you are passing through that you are not valuable. You are not valuable. Jesus, out of his busy shadow, he had to go 
and cross the boundaries. He had to go and cross through cultural limitations between the Jews and the Samaritans to go and reach this woman. You see the end of the story. Not only she was just a useless woman with a failed relationship, who was very thirsty, who had emotional problems, jumping from one relationship to another. Hardly didn't she know that she was so thirsty in her inner heart, thirsting for Jesus. Praise the Lord. So she tried to find this satisfaction from relationship, and yet she didn't find anything. But Jesus saw her problem. Jesus has never changed it. Today, he's still the same as he was yesterday and today and forever. This is a message to encourage you, brother. In this journey to heaven, it's not a game. Our senior pastor told, uh, taught us last Saturday, and he said, once you said yes to Jesus, the battle began. Praise the Lord. This is the battle of faith. And wherever you pass through challenges, the enemy will try to say, okay, you know, you are a failure. Nobody sees you. In fact, today, to Dakagoro just passed through. He did not greet you. How did, didn't you know Dakagoro had so many plans, maybe finding chairs and he turned a saxophone because he, had, he has an assignment to find a saxophone. So he's still thinking, going here and there. Praise the Lord. So don't worry. Don't worry, Jesus knows you, my brother. Jesus knows you, my sister. The young people, maybe you have gone through a broken relationship. This Samaritan woman, five failed relationship. Maybe that brother has said no to you, sister, and you think you are ugly. This is the message. You are beautiful, fearful, and wonderful man. Amen. To that brother, maybe that sister whom you loved, she said no, and you think you are so ugly and you are so bad. This is the message for you. Even if it's not today, maybe tomorrow, it's going to come and be true. Know that Jesus loves you. Let not circumstances define you. Let the word of God define you. Because the Bible said in the book of Psalm chapter 139, that we are fearful and wonderful made. Look beyond your circumstances. Praise the Lord. Samaritan woman, she thought that she's going to dig. Eh? She's going to take water from the world. But actually, she found more than that. Jesus allows us to pass through challenges so that we can shift our focus from our circumstances because the enemy uses our circumstances to distract us. Some of the people, even they kill themselves. Praise the Lord. I just met a sister a long time ago. She had this fire and see. I'm talking to the young people long time for five years and she thought she would get married and she come across somebody and say oh how are you yes huh where, where have you been and she said what your fiance yesterday got married that she's that sister was totally confused and i was at the at the university she will come i will talk to her and we will pray once i finish she will start again it was so critical she couldn't even study but thank you to the grace of our lord jesus christ one day she was awakened up and she was told to repent. She repented and then she slept. She is with the Lord. This is serious young people. Shift your focus to Jesus Christ. Don't think these things of the earth, they are the final things. They are temporal. They are not bad, but they are temporal. Let us shift our focus to the things of heaven. Praise the Lord. Our circumstances, God allows us to pass through circumstances so that he can strengthen our faith. The Bible says that we move from glory to glory, from strength and from faith to faith. He allows us to pass through challenges, to pass through trials, to pass through trials and challenges so that he can strengthen our faith. Praise the Lord. He can make us to encounter him. You know, once you meet Jesus, it's never the same again. It is never the same. The Samaritan woman was never the same again. The Bible says we have seen, we have heard the, the scriptures over there. She ran away once Jesus told everything about her. She left her jug and she forgot about the water. She had to run away to the village. The Bible says the crowd of people, Samaritans, not even the Jews, they came to see that prophet. And many believe in him. Praise the Lord.
The challenges we are passing through is not for you only. It was not for the Samaritan woman only. It was the large crowd of people. Praise the Lord. The Lord has allowed you to pass through challenges so that your family will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because one day he will appear and he will do something very, very great. The Bible says those who believe in him, signs and wonders, they shall follow him. We are living, we are the signs and wonders. And the wonders are following us. The circumstances God allows you to pass through so that when he comes and touch you, it will not be only about your faith. It will be about your family. It will be about your community. It will be around those people whom you are working with. It will be even about BCC. Amen. So please don't go, you know, God is favoring people, my friend this and that. No. In fact, those God whom he loves, normally they pass more challenges, bigger problems. Praise the Lord. You remember John the Baptist. I love that story. But he was, he was slaughtered, pastor, isn't it? He was killed. Can you imagine? And Jesus loved him very much. And this John who wrote the book of John, he was persecuted. Those people, God loves them. Normally he will allow, he will allow us to pass through problems and challenges so that we can encounter him. We can see him. He's he can reveal himself to our lives. See that this, uh, when, when Jesus was doing this miracle, when he was talking to this Samaritan woman, and the disciples came, and then later on the Samaritans in the village, they rushed in, and they became believers of, of the Lord. After hearing that good news, they came and they listened to Jesus, and they asked him to stay for two good days. So he taught them, and the man believes in him. Even his disciples who was around Jesus. You cannot know God even if you've got experience of salvation 30 years. Do you know the Lord in full extent? No. They saw him turning water in the wedding of Cana. And this time they found him, he's an evangelist. The whole, vig the whole village coming. Praise the Lord. And you see in other part in the book, of, in the gospels, Jesus with his disciples, he changed it into the, in the mountain of trans, transfiguration. He shined, it, he revealed it, his divineness in the physical appearance. And he was talking to Moses, I think, Moses. Praise the Lord. Jesus wants us to have a personal relationship with him, to shift our focus. When he was talking to the Samaritan woman, he was talking about water. Give, can you give me a drink? And then she was shocked. You being a Jew and now you're asking me to give you a drink? And Jesus said, I wish you had, you would have known whom you're talking to. This is the Messiah. Praise the Lord. And I will give you a fountain of living water. So he was shifting his focus from the physical water to the heavenly water, the fountain of the living water, the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Jesus allows us, or God allows us to pass through circumstances, to pass through challenges in order to shift our focus from the things of this world to the things of heaven so that we can know him. He can continue to reveal to us till the end of our lives. Because if you walk with Jesus, he will continue to reveal himself, even with his disciples. They just know, okay, he turned it, Water into a very good one. Now he's an evangelist. Now in the same, in a, in a certain scene, he changed it. His form changed it. He shined it. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants the same. He wants it to fortify our lives as believers. As the days goes on, the world is changing. More temptations. More challenges. Praise the Lord. And we're in the end times. And you see wars and rumors of war. Sometimes it is, is fearful. Eh? They fear that the nuclear war and this and that. But the Lord wants his people to be established in our faith. To be stronger. Praise the Lord. So he wants us to walk, to have a personal relationship with him. I know you are here. You can say, okay, I love Jesus. Even myself, I love Jesus. But have you encountered Jesus? It is very, very important to continue to read the scripture. 
day and night according to his word. To be prayerful. To come to Friday prayers. Or if you can manage, come to the morning glory. Fortify yourself, brother. Fortify yourself, sister. So that you can encounter the Lord. He's a living one. He wants to show himself to you. Even if you cannot see him physically, but you will see his works. And once you see his works, you will never drift away in faith. Praise the Lord. I want to share my testimony. One day, um, after completing my studies at the University of Dar es Salaam, very long time, maybe I was young as Deborah. <laughs> yeah, after, after completing, I suddenly I got a job. I think the Lord, I had to go to Bagamoyo. Very long time. Uh, <laughs> I was also skinny. <laughs> I was at Bagamoyo. Those long time, long time ago, it's, it's not like a current Bagamo, it's, it looks like a town. So I was working with a British project there, but myself, my accommodation, it was one of the room in the hostel of the medical students. And those medical students, they were not around in that place. They were on leave. So there were so many rooms, but only one lady. Just I was staying in the room and there was a security guard. And there was bushes around and the big baobab trees. And behind that hostel, there was ocean, just some few meters, maybe 30, 30 feet. So you could listen to the waves coming and the waves going. So that day was a very, very, it was very busy. And I forgot to prepare some food. So we finished at work. It was around 7.30. I went to my room and then uh, I showered and I, I go back to my room. Behold, now it is nine o'clock. I look at my vessels, there was nothing. And I was so hungry because I didn't even have my lunch. Very, very angry. Oh my God, I was starving. I was like, Lord, you know what? Huh? I tried to make some tea. Oh my God, black tea. No, 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 no. I was, Lord, what can, what, what can I do? I tried to look through the window outside. I saw a big baobab tree and the bushes. And the leaves, they were just blowing like this. To see the other room is dark. I, see, I saw the security guard over there. Behind there, there was ocean. Oh, Jesus, what can I do? I tried to sleep. No sleep. I was like, Lord, you know. Oh, my God. And you know, I didn't prepare well because in my family, I'm last born. So always surrounded by my sister, brother, providing, arranging, planning. So some, some, some laxity. So, but now the Lord allowed me to go there so he can build. I was like, Lord, you know, I was just walking. Hey, can I open door? I cannot open. I was just scaring and, and fearing. I was standing like this, Lord, what, what can I do? I was just starving, just waiting and waiting. Now it was 10 o'clock. All of a sudden, I had a knock, a knock from the door. When I went there, I opened that door. When I opened that door, I saw, I saw an old lady. She had a very big basket on her head. And she said, Mwanangu, Hujambo. Then I greeted her. And she said, you know, I'm just living nearby this compound in the hostel. And I'm coming from the rest slum from my, from my children, yes. But today I felt in my heart I should pass through this place and greet you. And she, and she took this basket, she put it down. She took a bread and said, can you have this bread? I will never forget in my life. Always, always, even I cry. Even in the morning when I was, the Holy Spirit reminded me this, I cried. Nobody will ever tell me God does not provide. Nobody. She put that bread and then she said, I'm going. And then she just went away. I had to eat that bread. Can you imagine? In that big hostel, a lady who was nobody, even in the project, I was nobody starving but the lord he knew he prepared that bread for me so i ate it so don't you think do you think i remember other breads i'm i'm eating every day no even bread i remember but i remember the bread that jesus gave me because jesus wanted to shift me from physical hunger and to make me understand he is the provider this is the reason he wants us to shift our focus. 
the challenges we are passing through, he wants to reveal himself so that we can know him more and more and we can grow stronger and stronger. I will never forget, my Lord is my provider. Since then, when you tell me about Psalm 23.1, Abraham, read it. Read it. Psalm 23.1, I'm telling you, I will read it. Every time I think about this, my tears come out. Can you read it? Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. God wants to reveal because he has so many things in his store. Thank you for the praise team. They said there's more that, that is found in you. Praise the Lord. You saw Jesus. Maybe he healed you. Thank you. You received him. You had peace. Thank you. I'm telling you, it's not the end of the story. He had so many in him. He wants to reveal himself as the provider. Don't take any shortcut. He will provide. He wants to, re to reveal himself that he cares for you, that he loves you, that he will meet you at the point of your need. Praise the Lord. Don't drift away in faith. Don't go and start to find these things and that and shortcut. No, let us stick to the word of God. His promises are yes and amen. Just know that the things he has allowed you to pass, you, you to pass through, maybe the sickness, he wants to reveal yourself that he's the healer. Nobody will ever, never cheat me that God is not the healer because I saw him healing me miraculously. And it was not for me, it was for my family and those around. They believe up to today that really your God is real. The challenges you are having is not for you, my brother. It's for more than you. He wants to reveal himself more and more. Keep meditating upon the scriptures. Keep working hard. When the Holy Spirit is say, Asha, Asha. When the Holy Spirit is says, go and join praise team. Join it, I'm telling you. It will never be in vain. I was just in, in the praise and worship team at, at the university. Today I've seen God is blessing me. So please the praise team continue. When it rains come, as you have said, as you have come this morning, may God bless you. There is the reward. God rewards us here and he shall reward us in heaven. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, my brother. I want you to encourage you, my sister. Jesus cares for you. He knows what you are passing through. He knew about this Samaritan woman. Even when before he came, because his moves was very strategical. He was not just going there and there. He knew that I'm going to cross here. I'm going to meet this Samaritan woman whom nobody cares. He has never changed. He's the same today, tomorrow. He wants to reveal that he has unlimited powers. He can provide you that job you are looking for. We have also been there. We were once applying for many jobs, but nothing happened. But one day, God showed up. Since then, I know even where I'm working, God has, has blessed me. Praise the Lord. I know him to be a provider. I know him to be my shepherd. He's your shepherd this morning. He cares for you. Even when you feel the pain, say, Lord, I thank you because I know you are going to heal me. Thank you, Lord, you're going to heal me. Even if you have no money, Lord, I thank you. I know you're going to make a way where there is no way. Jesus cares for you. Can you tell yourself, Jesus cares for me? Jesus cares for me. Don't be drifted away. Let your faith continue to be strong in him. He is faithful today. The Bible says Jesus is the faithful witness. Hallelujah. He's witnessing what me and you, you are going through. But he will make a way at the end of the day. We are going to come out stronger and stronger each day. Praise the Lord. We are going to come out stronger and stronger each day. Do not fear. The Lord is with us. This is a message. Jesus cares for you. He crossed over. He left his glory in heaven. And he came to meet Samaritan woman. Living his glory in heaven. What about you and me today? He's preparing his church. He's preparing his church, his bride, because he's coming a bit again. 
So when he says wake up, just wake up in the middle of the night. Pray, pray. Pray for the church, pray. Because in relationship with the Lord, also we receive orders. Praise the Lord. We receive order in our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. When he says, wake up, meditate upon the word, meditate upon the word. When he says, come here and pray, come here and pray, my brother. Sometimes you will not receive a direct answer, but he will give you responsibilities. If he says, pay for that construction play, pledge, pray, please pay, do it. Because he, he, remember to the Samaritan woman, he said, give me a drink. He didn't go there and say this and that. Give me a drink. You will be requested something. Do it. Let us obey the Lord. Let us walk with him so that we can experience the power of his mighty. We can experience our limited resources he has in his store. Because there is more that found in him. There is more than healing. There is more than deliverance. In him there is love. In him there is abundance peace. In him there is a fountain of the living water. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. Jesus cares for you.